Good morning, ladies. My name is Paula Dunn, and I'm the founder of the Limited Edition Leadership Academy, coming to you live from my home studio. So um, here we are again, and today I would love to talk to you um, about the confidence wheel in more detail. So yesterday we explored the five the five pillars that make up the confidence wheel. So hopefully by by now you've all had an opportunity to have have a look through your confident your own confidence wheel and see where you sit in terms of uh, creating your goals, how motivated you feel, where you sit currently in your academic results, um, your time management capabilities, and the support that you're currently getting um, from those around you. So today I'd like to explore a bit more deeply out of all of those five pillars of the confidence wheel and why it's important to have a look at those areas that are quite low, where you've scored low. So let's start with goal. So if you scored a low, the lowest score for goal in the whole aspect of the con confidence wheel, um, why is this important to, to sort of make focus on right now? Well, the problem is that it's human nature. We all like to strive for something. We all like to improve ourselves to be better versions of ourselves. So having a long-term goal is critical in order for um, to keep us motivated and engaged to, to, do what, uh, to, to achieve that goal that we want to get at the end of the day. Now, if you've scored low on, the, on that goal, then there's something that's not, not working for you right now um, that something's not clear for you in obtaining that long-term goal. So your homework for today and the weekend is to have a think about why is that low for you and what's going on for you for it to not be a high score um, in terms of goal. So obviously it's something not clear enough. So the second thing I want to talk about today is motivation. So if you scored fairly low in, in that area of the wheel, um, then there's something not going on for you in terms of keeping you engaged and motivated on a daily basis to do the work that you need to do to get to achieve the goal that you want. So we all have these big goals, these big dreams, which are so far away into the future that you know we can only be excited and engaged for so long before we kind of lose our steam and go, yeah, whatever. So if you're scoring low in the area of motivation, then there's some you, you're not breaking that that big goal down into little goals and little small wins. So you can fit, continue that motivation and desire to keep going on a daily basis. So the homework for you today and over the weekend is to consider what are your daily little little wins or something that can you know link you to your big goal. Okay. So the third thing we want to look at is academic results. Now this is the measure of success, right? And Again, you know, it's it's very at, at your age now, especially in in doing the HSC. You know, it's very black and white. It's like, well, you're either going to get the ATAR that you you need to get into university, or you're not. So, obviously, there's other opportunities and options out there to find your way to get where you want to go in life. And based on my experience in my journey, um, if you want something really badly. Uh, you will get it no matter what. It may not be at that point in time in your life that you want it to happen, but if you are consistent and you are, and you follow the five patterns of that confidence wheel, ultimately you will get you will achieve what you want in the end. So, have a look at your academic results. Is you know what are you if they're low in that area? What's happening for you at this point in time that it's not working for you? You know, are there concepts, are there things that you need to be able to grasp in terms of achieving what you need to achieve long term? So your homework is to have a look at all your subjects that you can't really got and, and, and identify and look, look, be honest with yourself. Identify the gaps that are in those particular subject areas where you can excel. So obviously we all have favourites. I had my favourite was biology, and so for me, any waking moment when I was studying for the HSC, I would just be going over and over biology. I loved it. Uh, one of the subjects I didn't really like as much was chemistry, and so I did whatever I could to to not focus as much on chemistry because it made me feel bad about myself that um, 
you know, as opposed to biology, which I really loved and I got really great scores and I ended up being in the top 10% of the state for biology because it, it just clicked with me. So what's happening for you right now? Then the next thing we want to look at is time management. So if that's low, a low part of the wheel in your, in your life, then have a, a couple of tips for you to consider. Number one, are you the type of person that likes to start things? So, you know, you, your teacher might say to you, okay, you need to go off and do this and you're all enthusiastic. You go, yeah, all right. So you, you put pedal to the metal and you're going at it and you're starting the work. But then over time, you kind of lose it and you go, yeah, and then you see a, a shiny object like, oh, what's this? What's that? And especially being behind the computer all the time now, um, it's really easy to click on, you know, and do searches and have 50 million different tabs open on Google on Google Chrome and, and going down a rabbit hole. So it's a time management right now is really important. Um, are you someone that, that's really good at maintaining things, you know? So maybe starting things might not be your thing. So you might procrastinate a bit and go, well, I'm not really sure how I'm going to go about doing something, performing a task. And sometimes that can lead to being stressed and overwhelmed. And so you end up either doing nothing or you start procrastinating and doing something else. So be honest with yourself and say, okay, well, once I get going, so if someone shows me the way, once I get going, I'm, I'm pretty good at going and finishing. So that's cool. Now, the third thing that some of us are uh, have challenges with is finishing things. So we might be really great at starting things. We might be awesome at maintaining it. But then somewhere along the, the line, we don't end up finishing for whatever reason. So if you're the, if you sit in that category, then, you know, really be honest with yourself. What, what's coming up for you at that point in time that prevents you from finishing everything that you start? You know, so, you know, is it is it that you lose the excitement, the passion, the stimulation, the engagement, like what's going for coming up for you that's preventing you from finishing so you can feel good about yourself that you've actually completed something from the beginning to the end. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is support. So who in your life is giving you the support that you need? So say, for example, we have, um, you know, we're so say we're, we're lacking, you know, having challenges with academic results. So who in your life right now that can support you in, in achieving those academic results? So do you need a tutor? Do you need extra support from your teacher? You know, like who do you need on your team to give you that extra, you know, extra 10 marks that you need to get to take you from here to here? So again, you know, when you're taking stock of your academic results, then really be clear and focused on what's stopping you from going to that next level in that particular subject and really drill down to the specifics. Because I think one of the things that we find challenging in terms of, um, you know, not, how do I say, um, not taking ourselves to the next level is not being clear on what's preventing us from going to that next level. Um, also, in terms of support, you know, is, you know, feeling motivated. Um, who's on your team that's motivating you? Is it, are your parents motivating you or are you feeling more guilty and, um, you know, that you that you should be performing better? Um, maybe you need some external support. Maybe someone like me or like a coach uh, that can really be on your team and really push you forward and make you feel good about yourself. Even when you feel like you're failing, the idea of what I do is, is help you take you to the next level regardless of how you're feeling so it's it's my it's my job to make you feel comfortable with becoming uncomfortable so doing things that you wouldn't normally do on your own does that make sense so have a look your homework is to go through your wheel again and determine for yourself which areas are the lowest for you and be honest and what's showing up for you. So you want to drill down into the detail of each of those five areas. And so next week, what we're going to do is we're going to do an interesting five-day sprint where we're going to be looking at um, our fears, our fears, and which results in our anxiety, which results in our anxiety and what we can do and how it comes up for us in our daily activities. So, um, I'm wishing you all a wonderful Friday um, and don't forget to be you, have courage and live life without limits. 
My name is Paula Dunn and I ha and have a wonderful day. Bye.